Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be... I'm kidding. I'm not going to do karaoke for the whole sermon. Don't worry. Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Pastor Barrett. Welcome to Morning Devos, even though I'm filming this at night, because I wanted to get the Christmas light in the background. I felt like it was important. This is also empty, so there's that. Uh, turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We're going to have a little Christmas uh, Devo this morning. Uh, so 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Before we get started, I wanted to show you something. Um, we're in the Christmas spirit here at church uh, and also here in the Phillips household. And you'll notice our Christmas tree here. Um, you'll notice something about it though. On the top, you'll see these beautiful ornaments. Lovely, lovely. But as you get to the bottom, there are no ornaments. And you might say, Barrett, why don't you have ornaments on the bottom of your tree? And the answer is because I have a child named Judah. And he has found those ornaments and either destroyed or broken them or uh, hidden them somewhere in my home that I do not know of. So if you come to my house, you might be sitting or stepping on random ornaments that my child has stolen from our Christmas tree. But he's 15 months old, so we forgive him and he's crazy. Anyway, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, where we are today. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, talk about Christmas a little bit. Christmas is a season where people usually say things like, oh, it's a season of joy, the season of hope, the season of cheer and Christmas spirit. You know, I think of like the elves from the movie Elf where they're just like all hyped up on sugar all the time and peppy and happy. Um, but the reality of Christmas can be different for people than maybe what we see in the Hallmark movies or hear in the Christmas songs. Sometimes Christmas can actually be a very lonely season, um, a very hard season for people, a season where you remember family members that might have passed away or the reality of your family maybe not being perfect is shown to you. Um, and Christmas can be a challenging season at times. So I want to talk about that today. Um, read along with me here. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says this. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he gave us new birth into a living hope. That word hope we're going to be talking about. Into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that, we can't, that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you who have faith and are shielded by God's power. Until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed to you that last time. So in this passage, Peter is writing, and he's encouraging the believers. And he's saying, hey guys, I want us to, to focus in on this hope that we have. Focus in on this hope that we have. And he calls it a, a living hope. And this living hope that we have is in Christ Jesus. It is a gift given to us by God. And we know that this hope uh, is in reference to the gospel of Jesus Christ that God sent his son Jesus to the earth, who lived a perfect life on this earth. And he came to this earth, lived a perfect life on this earth, and he willingly offered himself up as a sacrifice for you and for me and for all of humanity, um, taking the sin of the world on himself and willingly being crushed uh, and crucified and beaten and killed on our behalf. Um, and he did this for you and me because he loves us. Though we were not perfect, though we were undeserving, he loves us. And everyone has an opportunity to receive the gift of salvation. Salvation from our sin. Salvation from the punishment of our sin. Because we deserve punishment for our sin. We deserve separation from God for our sin. And yet Jesus says, I offer all of you, the entire world, this gift. And the gift that is freely given. It's not a gift that is earned. Gifts aren't earned, right? When you get to Christmas Eve, it's not like your parents are like, all right, everybody pay me 20 bucks per gift and then we'll get your gift. That's not a gift. That's you buying a gift. But your salvation is a gift that is purchased by Jesus on your behalf and is offered to you. Take this salvation. Take this forgiveness for sin. Take this righteousness, which I offer to you. And if you put your faith in me, in the work that I have done on your behalf, you then receive that gift of salvation. And I, 
I love when we talk about the word hope in the Bible, because every time in the New Testament that the word hope is used, it is used in reference to Jesus and the work of the gospel. And this is very important to notice here, okay? Because we're talking about this, this spirit or this season of Christmas and how, oh man, there's so much hope and joy here, but, but recognize here, okay? When the Bible talks about hope, the only time it talks about hope is in reference to hope being found in Jesus. Hope being found in the salvation that comes through his work and what he has done for us. You see, too often we try to put our hope in things that end up letting us down. Maybe we put our hope in our family. And family is not a bad thing. I'm not saying family is a bad thing, but, but we put our hope in our family and then our family members maybe don't come through in the way that we want them to. And no one's perfect. And sometimes everyone is going to let us down. At least every human is going to let us down. And so sometimes hoping that your family will be perfect, that hope is let down. Or hoping that your Christmas gifts will be exactly what you wanted, exactly what you're hoping for. And yet, even if you got everything you wanted, you just kind of feel a little bit let down or disappointed in the stuff that you got. Or maybe you didn't get everything that you were hoping to get. Or maybe you put your hope in, man, 2021, this is a new year. Forget 2020, that was a terrible year. This is a brand new year. I'm hoping for a better year. Well, just because the calendar changes, the world's still going to be messed up after the ball drops. It is. It's not like magically everything will just get better in 2021. It's going to be a hard year too. You can compare the two, but, but those are things we can't control. So to put your hope in things you can't control, or to put your hope on people that will let you down, or to put your hope in things that might never happen, it's a dangerous thing to do. And it feels like we're setting ourselves up for failure. And that's not something to, to put up as, man, this is the thing to hope in, because it's not reliable. But that's why the author here, Peter, says, hey, here's something to hope in. Here's the truest and only thing that you can hope in with confidence. That God loves you. That he died for your sins and offers you eternal life. A living hope that endures through all things. Every hard season, every bad year, every bad relationship, every disappointing moment or lonely moment, this hope endures through it all. And it is the hope found in Jesus and the salvation found in him. This is a hope to believe in. And this is a hope, guys, that I hope we cling to in this Christmas season. As we talk about hope at Christmas, the reason that we should associate hope with Christmas is because when Jesus came into the world as that baby on Christmas, well, I shouldn't say on Christmas, but we celebrate it on Christmas. When Jesus came into the world, he was the hope of the world. He was the hope of humanity. In him was bound up the promises of God that had been offered to us that one day God promised, he said, I will provide a way for you to be saved from your sin. And we hoped, humanity did for so long that that would take place and Jesus was the fulfillment of that hope. And he offers today to you and to me this new hope and salvation through his work on the cross. So I pray that this season, this Christmas season is full of hope but not in worldly temporal things that change all the time, but that, that your hope is founded in Jesus Christ and the work that he has done for you and his promises and his salvation that is offered to you. And in that hope and in that truth, there is truly so much joy to be had in this season and in every season of life and truly so much to hope on. So when things are challenging and tough in this season and later ones, hope in the Lord. Our living hope is found in him for now, in the present, and for the future. Love you guys. Merry Christmas.